Hi everybody, it's Ruth Royal here from Youth Pledge for Employers and today we're delighted to be talking to Rupert Marlowe who's the director at Play Today. Hello Rupert, thanks so much for joining us. Good morning Ruth, how are you? Very good, thanks. How are you doing? It's very well, busy as always. Yeah, oh, well t start off telling us a bit about that busy job that you do and where you work. Uh, well we have two sites, one, in, one based in Suffolk, uh, Woodbridge just down the road from Barlingay High School and then we have another one in North Cambridge or in Whiz Beach. Uh, the site here near Ipswich has uh, a laser tag arena, big soft play, inflatable park, and then we opened a day nursery three years ago. Wow. Uh, it's now getting full. Uh, yeah, very exciting. Didn't think I'd go into childcare, so <laughs> change of direction in my career. Um, and then we have a, another site in North Cambridgeshire which has Tempin Bowling, which is where I'm from and a big uh, big soft play and has a laser tag as well and we're looking to add outdoor mini golf to, to that site over wow. the next year so that's oh my our... gosh, that sounds fantastic so tell us a bit about what your job there involves uh, so i split myself between the two sites and obviously the nursery so i do the business side of the nursery so all of the funding uh, sending out invoices the bookings that side not the childcare side we have very capable managers who do that um, and then I do a lot of marketing, a lot of sales for the business. So, so my big job is making sure we get in corporate groups for Temp and Bowling in Cambridgeshire, making sure that we have lots of birthday parties. So we've been full for birthday parties in both sites for the last six weeks, which is really pleasing. Yeah, the huge demand after COVID, you know, people are still catching up from two years ago. Uh, introducing new products. So we now do Nerf here. We've started doing lots of private hires. So the biggest thing that came out of lockdown was people didn't want to or didn't always feel comfortable to integrate with everybody else so they could hire the whole place to themselves so you could hire the whole site in ipswich and you could hire the soft play in cambridgeshire if you want to uh, which has been very popular especially after school on a monday and tuesday and then lots and lots of staff training so we have the three or four managers in each site and two managers in our day nursery all of which my job is just to make sure you know be you know ear to bend problems and talk, talk to any issues you know, everything from COVID, which we had a you know huge amount of risk assessments and things, all the way through to finding grants to help us through financially, to you know if they need equipment or putting in new features like our golf, try to find the money to do that. So on a that sounds really varied. So on a sort of a, a daily basis, talk us through an a sort of a, an an average Rupert day. Though I'm guessing it's probably quite diverse. But t pick one and tell us a bit about what you might actually do on those days. Yes, no, it, no, it is very very diverse. I fill in for a lot of managers as well. So uh, if our if our managers away in North Cambridgeshire, I will go and run the bowling alley and the and the laser tag arena. That's what I would choose to do. That's my background from many years ago. I enjoy temp in bowling and I feel very comfortable in that environment uh, but for example yesterday we had our our leavers party for the nursery so yesterday I did lunch cover in the nursery from 12 till 2 while the managers got uh, got the party ready uh, my daughter's at the nursery so we, I then went to a leavers party from 2 till 3 for their graduation uh, before that we are introducing some interactive features here so I had a couple of calls in the morning with two different options one is a a big uh, projected wall which you can kick balls against and one is a sort of target game so that sort of filled up most of the morning um, and on top of that uh, we do all sorts of little bits of maintenance that I help people with so we have a maintenance person on site here does everything from painting fences to making sure the equipment's safe so yesterday morning uh, between 9 and 11 before those calls we had our, our bouncy castles or inflatable park uh, maintenance person came in and he just needs a hand moving things around tidying all that up so there we are inflatable maintenance followed by new features followed by nursery graduation uh, a little bit of Facebook um, social media marketing in the afternoon and then get home about sort of seven o'clock to read stories to my two little ones that is a, <laughs> that is a of my life that's really interesting because I think a lot of young people are interested in actually what people do in their jobs on a sort of day-to-day -day basis not just what they look like on a job description so that's really interesting to hear about. Rupert you've touched on sort of the maintenance person and what they do um, for your organisation tell us a bit about the function of sort of the childcare perhaps that happens on your site and also what sort of qualities or you know experience or skills you look for to recruit people into that. Uh, yeah, so that, that's the most challenging market because uh, we're looking for 
primarily level two or perfect world level three qualified childcare practitioners. Uh, and it's all a ratio business. So every baby here, so everybody under the age of two, you have to have a staff member for every three babies. Between two and three, you need to have a staff member for every four uh, toddlers, they're called. And in preschool, you can have a staff member for every eight children. So I'll give you an example today, we have 14 children in our preschool, so that needs two staff. And both of those need to be a level three or a level two qualified. So we've just taken on two new uh, students out of college who have just graduated, just become level three. Um, so we've, we're very fortunate here. We have about 12 to 15 uh, nursery staff at any one time, depending on full time or part time. And there's a lot of experience there. So we have uh, applicants anywhere from 18, 19, all the way up to 67. We have staff here uh, with almost every game between. So new starters, 19 to 20, all the way through to people who have done it for 40 years to a really experienced management team through to mums in the middle. So we have, you know, middle aged mums who just put that uh, that sort of very nice motherly touch to everything, which really settles the children well. Um, and, and we really look for the same things as we do in the play centre. Um, you know, they, they've taught, they've qualified, they have all the skills. Um, and we can add the bits they don't learn from college. So uh, the speaking to parents, uh, observations on the children, uh, the actual nuts and bolts of it. So you know, there's lots of little jobs that have to be done in the day, checklists, you know, signing children in and out, making sure everything's clean. Those simple things like spillages are cleaned up quickly so everybody's safe, making sure fire exits are clear. All of those things is what you don't learn in college, which we're very good at teaching. But the same traits come across. So you have to be enthusiastic in your job. You have to actually want to work with children. So the biggest thing is, you know, the fun bit of the job is the actual working with children. You know, that's that that is 80 percent of what of what we look for the, the staff to do. So setting up activities, making sure that they're having a good time in the garden, making sure that they are learning uh, and making sure that we extend their learning. So for something they're interested in, so if they're enjoying uh, numbers on a day to make sure that we try and not just count to 10 but go to 20. Um, so if you're not if you're not interested in children's development and trying to educate it, it's not the right career for you whereas if you enjoy working with children and you want to do it it's you know it's one of it's something that I've never been in before we've set it up three years ago and I can see it's just a great career um, but and, and the same thing the managers ask for here you know you have to be reliable because we have to have those people in making sure that we have those right ratios for the children. You have to put the effort in, you have to be enthusiastic and you have to uh, turn up on time, I'm afraid. You know, if you're 15 minutes late and there's three parents waiting at the door, um, that you know really does cause a very bad start to the day. Yeah, absolutely. No, that's really helpful to understand the sort of skills that are needed and also the qualifications in terms of that level two or level three childcare practitioner. What about sort of for working in your centres in the non sort of childcare parts? What sort of skills and attributes do you look for from staff there and what kind no. of roles do they do? So we have five main roles. So so we employ here from 15. So we, we ha we'll happily have people on work permit. Probably the, ma the majority of our staff are 15 to 18 here. Um, and they fill the most crucial roles. So we have a lot of senior people again in the play centres, but they are the ones who are doing the cooking, doing the front of house management, whereas actually the building is run around those 15 to 18 year olds. So we have a laser tag arena that needs hosting. So you make sure the children have watched their safety video, make sure that everybody has a gun that works, you're there to answer any questions, you're there to make sure the children are the right age, to make sure the safety part is there and to make sure that if there's any issues, you're solving them quickly because it's only a 10 minute game in laser tag and they really want to have that short, sharp fun, but it does need that person to be right on it. And they need to be, they need to be buoyant. They need to be excited because even though they might do a hundred games of laser tag in a day, this children only get two. So it's that, that's a real key role. Um, we have serving areas here. So we have a front counter where children obviously need good money. You need to know, need to know how money works, need to have good maths because you're giving people change or, putting things in the card machine, so you're serving coffees, taking orders, making sure that you're polite, making sure that you look the part, making sure that you're reading back people's orders, because if they've ordered five meals and you read it back and there's only four on there, very important because if a child's missing a meal, that's a real issue. As a man who has children, I'm aware of that. So that's the second big role. Uh, we have supervising areas here. So we have a drop slide 
um, which we let children go down. And we have an inflatable area, both of which has to have a member of staff to make sure that they're it's safe, that if anything deflates, we've got somebody right on the site to make sure if anybody um, is worried or isn't behaving correctly, that behavior is corrected to make sure that everybody's safe. The biggest thing in soft play is all about safety and fun. So we want them to have a really good time, but in a safe way. So if people are climbing on things they shouldn't, we have that member of staff there. Same with the drop slide, you know, they have to have long sleeves, have to have long trousers. So they need to go back to see their parents. And again, people can hurt themselves if we're not doing that properly. Um, and then the really exciting role that everybody loves here is taking out food, clearing tables, all of those basics that people really appreciate. You know, and again, same things are important, making sure that your hair's tied back, making sure that you, your hands are clean. Because if you're handing people food, they expect you to look, you know, doesn't matter whether you're 15 or 50, they expect you to be smiley and polite. Can we get you anything else? All of those simple things. Um, but it's what's made it really successful here, all of those little customer service jobs. And we've been really fortunate. We've got two or three really big local high schools who provide some really, really good um, staff for us. And we're the first stepping stone to them, you know, their future career. So a lot of our staff have gone on here to go and work at Tesco's or to go and work at big supermarkets because they've had those two or three years really good experience. Um, so they're already turning up on time. They're already presenting themselves well, they're already learned how to speak to people. And when they're asked to do a job, they already have that mindset that this is an important role for the business. That's really helpful, Rupert. Thank you for talking us through those. Tell us a bit about how you got into your job. Uh, you know, I, I, I fell into it. So at, um, I used to do bowling when I was young. Um, and at 16, 17, I was asked by a friend of mine to cover a couple of shifts. Um, covered a couple of shifts, was asked by the manager to stay on in bowling. Um, ended up managing the site at 19. Uh, I think it was one of the youngest managers in the country, uh, which was tricky for the first two years. Uh, made massive amounts of mistakes, huge mistakes. I had a very, very good director at the time and a very good assistant manager who, who helped me and supported me. And I did lots of management training. Uh, and by 21, I was, you know, I had it under control um, and then went to manage that site for 14 more years um, after that whilst doing consultancy and all other things in Tempin Bowling. Uh, eventually we were bought by a big national chain, so very successful. That was the end result of the business to, uh, uh, to you know, have the directors, you know, we did 20 years, 20 years in total, the business was there before it got bought out. So that's the end result of lots and lots of hard work when you can sell to a big chain, uh, still going now. So I'm quite proud that sort of 25 years on, uh, for a leisure business to still doing well and still being the same site is, is a big success story. Oh, that's fantastic. And um, if you were to go back and to give your younger self um, a piece of advice about careers, what, what would you tell yourself? Uh, try, try more things. So uh, don't close yourself off. So um, I had a really good opportunity when I was very young working in a hotel and I got the opportunity to do housekeeping one week um, to do a uh, kitchen one week, to work in reception one week. Um, one of the best things you're ever going to do, if you ever get an opportunity and someone says, we've got a varied role, uh, very similar to here. You know, if you're going to come and work here, don't close yourself off. I don't want to do birthday parties or I don't want to supervise this or I don't want to do the till. You know, even if you're not confident with something, people will teach you um, and just go in open minded. Um, enjoy it. Find something you enjoy because uh, you're at work a long time, people have told me, and as I've just turned 40, that is true. And you need to do something that you do enjoy. Um, and I would tell you know, my girls are, are much younger, but I would just say to them, go and try lots of things, enjoy it, but go in with a positive mindset. If you only go into a job uh, just to earn money or just to, um, because your parents are pushing you into it or because of any reason, that isn't, that isn't going to give you the result you want. That is absolutely brilliant advice. Rupert, thank you so much for your time today. It's been absolutely brilliant to meet you. Pleasure. No, definitely. Look forward to it. Thank you. Thank you.